Okay, so you're stepping on the scale after a week's worth of training, absolutely dumbfounded why the scale is not moving. Hi, I'm Sean Taylor, and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 reasons why the scale is not moving. We're going to break that curse for you right now. Number one, how are you sleeping? Research shows that if you're not sleeping at least seven to eight hours a night, that is going to interrupt your body's ability to lose weight. And number two, stress. How are you, how's your stress level? The stress is going to release that cortisol into your body, making it virtually impossible for you to lose weight. Number three, what kind of workouts are you doing in the gym? All right, are you doing the, what we call the, the OMG workouts, the one muscle group a day? So you're not really, you're not really working the body the way that it should be working. You're, you're coming in here and you're doing the exact same things over and over and over, expecting different results. And as far as I know, isn't that the definition of insanity? Do you see where this is going? So you need to make sure that you're changing it up. You need a different routine when you go into the gym. When you go into the gym, you need to make sure you have a very clear, concrete, step-by-step -step plan to execute every day when you go into the gym. Uh, you, you might be working out, right? But are you doing mostly cardio? You're doing these long, arduous bouts of cardio. Well, believe it or not, you're not really getting that muscle stimulation that you think you're getting from doing cardio. You come in here and you're doing 30, 45, an hour worth of cardio every single day. And yes, meanwhile, that while that is working, but believe it or not, too much cardio can actually raise the estrogen levels in your body. And if you're raising the estrogen levels in your body, you are going to see all, all sorts of things. You're going to see a decrease in sex drive. You're going to, your, your body tissue uh, is going to soften up around the, uh, around the chest area, around the midsection. And so you need to make sure that you're changing it up. So doing too much cardio is actually working against you. Number four, your diet. Let's talk about that. That's one thing that no one wants to talk about. So when they, when I get approached, and I get approached all the time about the diet, Sean, how can I get rid of this? I'm just not, I'm in the gym and I'm doing it. My first question is, how's your diet? How's your diet? Okay, so we know about the macros, right? We, we always talk about the macros, macros, macros. Meanwhile, that's great, but we're missing it over here in the micros, all right? One of the easiest things that you can do to to boost your, your, your nutrients is getting a really good amino acid. Like for example, like the essential amino acids that we sell here at Rock Solid Nutrition. And it's one of those things that will give you everything that you need. It will fill in the missing gaps. But along with that, you need to make sure that what you're eating, every meal of the day needs to have some type of green in it. That is your friend, my friend. You wanna make sure you have cabbage, you wanna have kale, you wanna have uh, broccoli, cauliflower, um, asparagus, those type of deep leafy greens like that will really help you to, to see the kind of results that you're looking for. All right, what about your fruits? Fruits are just, fruits are so good. You know, when you, when you don't eat fruit for a while and you go back to eating fruit, you eat, you eat things like, like grapes and kiwi and strawberries and blueberries and blackberries, those things, they, they taste so succulent and sweet. That's what sugar really is supposed to taste like. Here is the downfall of too much fruit. Fructose, fruits are very high in estrogen. Again, if your body is estrogenic in nature, you're not gonna see the weight loss that you're looking for. You're gonna get soft around the middle, you're gonna get soft, soft around the chest area because your body is, is estrogen dominant. So you need to make sure that you're watching the amount of fruits that you're getting in, the amount of foods that are actually high in estrogen, like soy which is another reason why you may not be losing weight. So if you're doing a lot of soy products, you know, soy is extremely estrogenic in nature. So you need to make sure that you're watching that. Uh, believe it or not, um, dried fruits, very estrogenic in nature. And guys, you guys are really going to love this one. Alcohol. Alcohol is made of what? Barley and hops. Those two key ingredients that make alcohol, guess what? Extremely high in estrogen. Again, creating that very estrogen dominant um, internal landscape, thereby rendering all of the work that you're doing practically useless. Now, a beer or two, every once in a while, you're sitting down and you're watching the game with the guys or with, the, with your tribe or whatever, that's one thing. But if you're going home every day after work, you're knocking back two, three, 
two, three beers every day, you're not giving your body a chance to get rid of that stuff and it just and it just compounds and so you're not gonna see the results that you're looking for. Alcohol is a huge no-no if you're really trying to lose weight. I mean, if you're, I don't care if your diets or if your calories are low. If your calories are low and you're getting in alcohol, your body will stop what it's doing. It will shut all of the digestive processes down and it will focus on alcohol as fuel and, and that's why it's really difficult to test positive for alcohol because it burns it out of the system so fast. And so it shuts all of the digestive processes down. Those things get stored as fat, sealed, and it focuses primarily on alcohol. So let's backtrack. You have sleep, you have the types of workouts that you're doing, you have too much cardio, you have stress, you're doing the wrong type of workouts, you know, and of course, alcohol, that's number five. Are you on a very strict diet, right? You know, you, you're doing the veggies, you're doing the veggies, you're doing the veggies, and you're not doing carbs, but you're also not doing intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is, I mean, it's it's been around forever. It has been around for such a long time, but it has recently begun getting steam. Your age, for example, uh, my niece was just born several, several weeks ago, and she is right now, she's on mama's milk because she's only two weeks old, and that's what's appropriate for her. Now, when she's three years old, she's gonna be on a completely different diet, and when she's a teenager, she's gonna be on a completely different diet. You guys see where this is going? So in different phases of life, you should be eating different things. I'm almost 50 years old. I do not eat what I ate when I was 20. When I was 20, I could shovel it in. It didn't matter what it was. My body would incinerate it. That's no longer the case, all right? So I need to make sure that I'm getting in the type of nutrients that, that my body needs at my age so I can maintain my musculature, so I can maintain my productivity, so I can maintain my energy. And again, if you're not getting it where you need it, you need to make sure you're filling in the gaps with the appropriate supplements. You know, for example, like a, a T boost, like strength test. Strength test is an excellent, excellent uh, T booster to fill in the gaps. Or if you're not getting it in your greens, you need to get in a really good essential amino acids. Rock solid is excellent in that regard as well. All right, but intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is not going without food, ladies and gentlemen. It really isn't. Intermittent fasting is fortifying the body's ability to incinerate nutrients, to assimilate nutrients, to build testosterone, to build muscle, to create the body that you want by simply, by simply not eating. By not eating, you actually raise your GH level and you fortify your body's ability to really burn. So you need to make sure you're doing intermittent fasting and try it once a week, all right? And, and here's how you do it, really quick. Your last meal stops at 6 p.m., all right? Your next meal should start at 2 p.m. the next day. Does that make sense? So that's that's like a 18 hour fast. So you stop at six, you, your next meal is at two. And here's, in very quickly, here's what you do. You have a healthy, you have a healthy protein, uh, a healthy green, and you have a healthy protein and a healthy green, and a fat. That's what you do. See how simple that is? So you can have salmon, chicken, or steak with broccoli, and um, I would say uh, with avocado or a nut. Boom, right there. That's how you do it, that's how you do it. And here's what you do, when you break the fast, you have the exact same meal. Keep it simple, keep it simple. And as you do it, your body will respond to it and you will learn how your body responds to certain nutrients and how your body responds to intermittent fasting, okay? So intermittent fasting definitely needs to be in your arsenal. Finally, let's go back to your workouts, what you are doing and too much cardio, what you shouldn't be doing. Cardio is great, but doing cardio er excessively every single day is actually working against you. So let's fix that. Blitz training, yes. Is it tough? Of course it is. But you need to make your blitz training what's tough for you. Don't look at what the other guy is doing or what the, what the cool guy is doing on YouTube and now he's doing all of the stuff and it looks great and you want to do that. That's a recipe for injury, guys. No, do not do that. What you want to do is 30 minutes. 30 minutes of some weight-bearing weight resistance 
exercises that's really high octane, like a snatch or a clean and press or a slam ball or, or something along those lines, or even something simple like, like squat jumps or burpees or something along those lines. And you wanna do that over and over up to 30 minutes, not 35, not 40 minutes, because you will, after a while, you will get that, that endorphin release and you're wanna, gonna keep going. Believe it or not, it will, it'll grow on you. You're, you're gonna wanna keep going, don't do that, no. Hit training or blitz training is 30 minutes. Get in, get moving, get out. After that, you should be in the middle of a fast. After that, drink your water or grab, grab an essential amino acid uh, uh, shake or drink and, you'll, and just sip on that for the next hour. Then after that, you just either uh, drink a little bit of lemon water with a little bit of Himalayan sea salt in it, bam. And, that's, and then you wait until 2 p.m., then you get your first meal in. See, and don't look at it as going without food. Look at it as for, fortifying the body's ability to really, really jack up your GH, release that testosterone, and create that muscle that you really want to get. Get your sleep, lower the stress, uh, make sure that you're getting the right kind of diet in to make sure that those hormones are in check, right? You make sure that your food, your, your meals are not high in estrogen. Get your estrogen levels down. Get your testosterone levels up. Okay, you don't, wanna, you don't want too much testosterone either because believe it or not, an excess of testosterone, guess what, gets, or gets aromatized, all right? They turn that, your body actually will turn any excess into estrogen. So you wanna make sure it's all about balance, guys. All right, so make sure that you're staying away from soy, all right? Say, you know, not too many, uh, some fruits is okay, but I wouldn't make my diet fruit dominant. Does that make sense? Because your body will become estrogen dominant. All right, keep your stress levels under control because that also will create uh, a cortisol dominant internal landscape. You don't want that either, okay? All right, and another thing, make sure that you're getting in healthy fats. A diet too low in fats will actually work against you. Fats are not the enemy, guys, it's sugar. Excess sugar is the enemy, so you wanna make sure you stay away from that. All right, and the last one, make sure that you're getting in your micros. Macros are important, right? But the macros, create that raw material, right? But we need something to turn that raw material into the lean muscle tissue and the lean bone and organ tissue that we need. That's micros, all right? Your micro uh, nutrients, things like your potassium, things like trace minerals like boron, which helps to create that, uh, that testosterone that you need. So there you have it, guys. If you guys have any questions, any comments about all of the information that I just gave you, definitely Facebook me, uh, shoot me a private message, email me. Hey, and if you really like this, check out my YouTube channel over there on YouTube, and I guarantee you, you're gonna get more information than you thought was out there. For the Future Fit Nation, I'm Sean Taylor. I will see you guys at the gym.